Welcome back to Home Theater Gurus. This is another update of the house build. As you can see, we've got sheetrock. Finally, sheetrock's here. So let's go ahead and take a look inside. This is gonna be a quick one. We're just gonna be looking at the main theater because as of last night, I was given the green light to get in there and get to work. So, but just real quick, as you can see, they've got a lot of the ceilings done. Actually, all the ceilings done in the, in the house. Let's do a quick little spin around because now that we've got the green light for the theater, the next few updates are all gonna be theater related. So as I get you know past one stage to the next stage, I'll be doing update videos. So I've got the riser in, and before I closed it in, I wanted to go ahead and do a video of the wiring and just some, you know, some basic assembly or how to build your riser. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now we're gonna step up six inches right here onto this riser. Now this is just for aesthetics. We do not need it because we've only got one row, but it also allows us a place to, uh, you know, we need power for our seats, tactile transducers and stuff like that. All right, so I angled the lights, hopefully to where they don't blind anyone. There's no light in here, no windows or anything, so we've got to have them. So the seats are gonna be right here. Of course, that's the Valencia Tuscany seats. That's the plan to have those right there with a uh, row of four with a love in the middle. And so we've got our power right here. Now, if you're wondering why there's an orange cable, you see that's orange instead of yellow going right here to that outlet. I didn't have any more 12 gauge or 12 two, and I wasn't gonna go out and buy some just for this little bit and I had some 10 two. All the circuits in here in the house, all the outlets are 20 amps, so they're all 12 gauge. So I just grabbed some 10. It's a little more of a pain in the butt when I get ready to wire it, but it'll be fine. Save me some money and some time. So we've got that coming over here to feed the outlets for the chairs and then back around over here to this wing. And that's for like a vacuum cleaner and stuff like that. We'll need a place to plug that kind of stuff in. The seats have USB and all that for like cell phones and stuff. We don't need it for that. And it goes back in the wall, feeds that outlet. Now that outlet is not gonna be there when we get done. The inspector said he just has to see it working, properly working, you know, he checks the ground and all that in it, make sure everything's wired right. Whatever happens after is, you know, he'll be out of here. So that's not gonna be there in the finished product. When we, after the fabric track goes up, I'll finish everything else, but you'll see there's gonna be a track along the bottom section. This piece here won't be done, nor will that piece there. So uh, anyway, those will be covered up. So the one in the back back there, those two. Now on concrete, you cannot have non-treated wood on concrete. So I wasn't gonna go and spend the crazy amount of money. I already spent enough on all this junk with COVID. But uh, so I just got some treated lumber and cut some quarter inch strips. So I've got everything lifted up a quarter inch with liquid nails, you know, just kind of holding everything in place. But you can see them down there. So everything is suspended quarter inch. Now the floor is not perfectly level, so it was actually kind of good because we could level the floor and, uh, you know, by doing that, like right there, it's, I don't know if you can see it, but it's more than a, a quarter inch gap. Anyway, it just helped us level the floor, so it's even better than it was. And let's see, of course, this right here, that's for the LED lights. We've got one under the riser lip there. We've got one under the lip right here. We're gonna have the little wings coming up here and there, like the little ceiling, they kind of overhang. We're gonna have, those are gonna light up as well. And then we're gonna have a ceiling feature up here that is gonna hide the top fronts. And it's gonna have some base trapping as well. That's gonna light up. And it's only uh, 12 volts DC going through it because all of the LED wires are coming in right here. So I have a little box right here with a 12 volt transformer. And right here is 120 volts that's going to turn that transformer on and off. And it is in this box here. This is where it comes out. This is going to have a motion detector. So whenever you walk in the room, that motion detector is gonna pick it up. It's gonna light this lip right here up, all the lips we just talked about. You know, all the LEDs are gonna light up so you can see the risers. And then I'm also gonna have a poster box, which we'll do later on the channel, like a 27 by 40, you know, theater poster box. You can go on eBay and get the, the posters pretty cheap, really. Like some of them are seven bucks, some are 20 bucks, but it's the actual double-sided posters. And I did that in my last room. Here's a shot of it. Really, really liked it. It's just a cool feature. It gives you some light when you walk in, but the kids enjoy it too. You know, it's a little kind of nostalgic and they get to pick something out and, you know, they're easy to swap out. 
We'll do that on the channel as well. I use a, the frames I use work great. I mean, the diffuser is already on the back of it. It just works excellent. All right, what else? Tactile transducers. That's this black cable here. Now, of course, you know, the carpet, it's going to get installed here. They'll just pop a little hole and I'll have them uh, untie that and tie it back up. And I've just got some extra so I can pull it out. Once the seats are in place, just give me a little bit extra to work with and then I'll wire the tactile transducers how I need to to get the right ohm load at the seats or at the amp. And of course, that's the tactile transducer wire here going up and it comes down back into the bundle here. Spacing, we didn't cover this very much before, we probably should have, but notice all of the speaker cables and even my LED right here, you know, this LED is, is DC, but primarily the speakers and tactile transducers and stuff like that, you wanna keep them away from your power wires. See how when they're running parallel, they've got nice plenty of space between them. And when you have to cross them, cross them at 90 degrees or, you know, as most as an extreme an angle as you can get. Same thing as we have here. You know, you don't wanna run them parallel next to each other because you could get some induction, like that 60 hertz tone on the, uh, from the power line you can get onto your speaker cable and cause some hum in your speakers. Okay, so last video, this room wasn't even sheetrocked, so I'm gonna do a little, just kind of look around. Of course, we got the triadic gold LCRs going up front, and all the rest of them are gonna be silver sats in walls, you know, even the wides and the wides are on an angle, so we're gonna have a perfect uh, angle perfectly for our seat here. There, I'm dug down right about where the seats are gonna be. And of course, we've got our surrounds and our wides, and then right there, I'm gonna be building, I'll be building that today. And over here, those are gonna be the columns for our mains. And our surrounds are gonna be right there and right there. And then we've got our tops, top rear is going up over there. And top centers, that's the sat nine, triad sat nine. And we've got the fronts over there. Now the top front and rears, all four of those are going to be triad in room silver series. So, but they match identically to the in walls. Same tweeter and woofer that we have over here on the surrounds and rears. So uh, we've got a lot of the same speakers in this room. We tried to keep the timber matching as perfect as possible in this room. Now it didn't go with the silver LCR. You know, I could have, and I would have had the same woofers and tweeters all the way around. We upgraded to the gold LCR because it's, this is a triad demo room. And because of that, we really wanted to show off the gold LCR and take it up to the next notch with the sound from the front three. So uh, yeah, this is, it's gonna be awesome. All right, let's check out the equipment closet. Of course, we got the bundle coming down right there with all the speaker cables and all that stuff in it. And I did have them cover this up right here with sheetrock because this has the power wires coming into the boxes, just a little bit extra protection. You won't see any of this. This is all gonna be covered with uh, acoustic treatment and fabric. And we've got our vent, supply vent for the closet up there. We are gonna have a base track in that corner, but you will see a small section of uh, ceiling right there. There'll be a vent right here, just an open vent, but the return is actually gonna be, well, we're gonna put a drop down ceiling that's going to be about eight feet, eight and a half feet up. This is a 12 foot ceiling. The cavity is gonna have a ton of insulation for base trapping, and we're gonna have the return on the eight foot ceiling. So when this door is closed, especially, it's gonna pull a lot of air through that vent projector of the NX of the RS 2000s hanging right here. It's gonna keep that area nice and cool, and it's gonna pull it, you know, the acoustic fabric is breathable, it'll pull it right through the fabric to the return. And insulation, here we're using R19. This is made for two by sixes, or the, the depth of it is made for a two by six. So that's what we're gonna use. I have seen people use rock wool, like two or three inch rock wool and stuff like this. I've even seen them do it with two by 12s, two by 12 risers, and they'll stick a little piece of three inch rock wool. I mean, you may as well just take your money and go throw it in that river over there. It's, that's completely inferior to something like this. Rock wool absorbs just just as good per inch. But here, you know, you need as you need a full fill if you want to try to absorb the most resonance, you know, the lower they are. And I mean, it's much cheaper than rock wool too. Might as well use something that works 
better, works properly, and is actually the right product for what you're trying to do. So guys, don't use rock wool. I know there's guys out there that, do, that are doing it. Just be careful, don't follow everyone blindly. It's a waste of money and it's not as effective. Now, of course, you just wanna lay it in. You know, see how thick it is. Just kind of lay it in gently. You don't want to compress it. Of course, I've got some cables and stuff on here that's just going to kind of lay on top. So it's not going to be, I'm not going to cut it and make sure they fit on both sides of the, the wires and cables or anything like that. I'm just going to lay it on top, but it's, uh, it's going to work very effectively. Now I could use this as a base trap. I have a ton of base trapping already going on in here. So I'm not going to bother with it, but I, you know, I could go and drill holes you know, along the corners and tri-corners where the base pressure is the greatest, we could use, you know, that method and uh, make it a base trap. Now, of course, I could put vents too. You see that sometimes people actually put floor vents, but I don't really like that look. It looks kind of tacky to me. So uh, if I was gonna do it, I would drill the holes, you know, through the decking. That would be the method I would use. Now decking, some people keep going back to some people because there's a lot of bad methods out there they'll put multiple layers of decking, okay? In a room like this where there's nothing below us, if there was something below us, we would soundproof the main floor, not the risers, okay? Because you have to think of the room as a shell and the original floor would be the bottom of the shell. So that's what you would soundproof. But as far as your risers go, you just don't want them to resonate and you want a good solid decking. So instead of going through all the nonsense of all multiple layers and green glue, which again, throwing money out the window i mean what is your purpose you know uh you just want a solid floor so we're going to be using actual floor decking now look how thick this stuff is i mean it's almost an inch and a quarter thick it's like an inch and three sixteenths thick and so this is a lot stronger than say two three quarter inch pieces of plywood because the plywood has a seam in the middle so it's not solid let's say you took two strips of three quarter inch plywood. You cut each of them three and a half inches. That's the width of a two by four. You screwed them together, you put liquid nails or whatever between them and you screwed them together. And then you compared it to a two by four. The two by four is still gonna be a lot more rigid because it's solid. There's nothing in the middle, there's no break. Now, of course the liquid nails will help a lot stiffen it up. But the thing is, I mean, we don't have a break here. This thing is, I mean, you see that there's there's no wiggle in that I mean, this is it's insanely stout and then it's got tongue and grooves so your joints are going to be perfect so anyway this is what it's for i mean it even says it's upside down for a quiet stiff floor i mean it's, it's solid it's it's very dense and you need density for sound you know to kind of hold sound transmission back that's another method you can use is like you know, density. That's why some people put two layers of drywall, which causes some issues with room modes. It strengthens those, but it, the density helps maintain or keep the sound in the room. While we're on the topic of decking and things like that, as far as the construction of the riser, I use this. I use a pass load. I mean, this, I love this gun. It makes it so fast. I mean, I can shoot, you know, I've got four nails in the end of that joist right there. I can, you know, shoot them in five seconds. 10 seconds, I mean, it's, you can screw it together, but what you have to understand is, screws have a very low shear strength, which doesn't really matter when all of the wood is supported on the floor. But, you know, let's say that all of these joists were actually being supported by the ends there, by the bands on the end. If you put screws in there, it's actually much weaker than nails. If you ever tried to bend a nail back and forth, it takes forever before it breaks. It may never break. You may, you know, sometimes people just beat it into the wood flush and say, screw it. Now a screw, you, if you want to break it off, it's very easy to break off. Just take your hammer, beat it down. By the time you beat it up the second time, it's going to snap right off. They do not have a high shear strength. They're not made to carry load vertically like that. They just hold things together. So you really, yeah, you have to be careful building your risers with screws. Actually, the inspector that inspects my house, we had the conversation. He's kind of interested in the movie room and you know some of the stuff I'm doing, like staggered studs. We had this conversation, and he will actually fail a house if you have screws supporting your joist. Usually, he's going to want joist hangers, but I've got the spacers, you know, so I'm transferring the weight down to the concrete. 
But even with a joist hanger, you have to use the proper screws if you're gonna use screws. You can use nails all day long, you know, they have to be the right size, like 12s and 16s. But if you use screws, it's gotta be one of the very few that have the high shear strength and are spec to be used for that type of load. So it's just something to be aware of. There's companies out there telling people to use screws. You just have to be careful and understand, you know, that it may not be the best thing or you need to understand what kind of screws you're using. The nails are gonna be just fine. If you ever try to pull a nail out, one nail, I mean, you're talking about well over 100 pounds of bite. And uh, you know, you're not gonna be worried about a nail walking out. That happens outside where we have changes in humidity, temperature, things like that. That's what creates or makes nails, you know, eventually they may start pulling out. Your house hasn't fallen down, right? I mean, you may have a house that's 20 years old, the nails aren't falling out, they're not pushing out. A lot of the sheetrock is being held by nails. They still use nails and screws. So you're not gonna have to worry about it. There's no reason to use screws. Now, if you don't have a nail gun, sure, use screws. Just make sure you're using the right kind, get some really good ones. If you have a nail gun like that, by all means, that's much, much faster. All right, guys, that's it for this one. We're gonna go ahead and get the insulation put in, get this riser deck. All right, guys, this is 30 minutes in the future. After I ended that last video, I just wanted to add this to this video. So I just got in here and finished all the insulation. Like I said, it took me about 30 minutes. And uh, well, I didn't discuss the in-wall speaker wire. I mean, we looked at it, but I didn't explain why we're using that. You know, with the 12 gauge, or I'm sorry, the 12 volt converter for the LED lights, you know, it uses super thin wires on those LED strips. So why are we using 14 gauge you know, 14 to in wall speaker wire. And the reason is because we had it on hand and it works great. We've got long distances. I mean, we're going from over here, you know, through the floor, we're traveling quite a bit of distance. And so it's not gonna hurt anything at all to oversize the wire a little bit. And it's in wall wire. It's coated. I mean, you know, it's, we don't have to put it in conduit and protect it. And that's another thing with the riser. We didn't uh, do conduit in this riser because I've already got everything I'm ever gonna need. And everything is, it's all, wire that's made to be in a wall or in a floor. So that's just uh, two little things I wanted to bring up. And also, I know I said in the video, I wasn't going to cut the wire and split, I mean the insulation and split it. I did end up doing that. So you can see I split it there and you know, and then we're gonna put it back on top. But I used some of the little wedges and stuff I had to uh, finish off the floor. I didn't wanna just waste it because we're gonna be using it for base trapping and stuff. And yes, I'm touching it better hand it. I'm gonna live. So anyway, so yes, I did split it to get a nice feel on both sides of all the wires. So at the end, when it came down to it, I just couldn't lay it on top and, you know, not that it would have mattered really, but so there it is. Oh, and also do something really stupid. The second bundle of R13 or R19, I opened it up and it's freaking two feet wide. Of course, everything over here is on 16 inch center, so I had to cut it. And if you don't know, you can take a two by four, or you know, for the ones that were 16 inches, I just would overhang them, put that board right there, and then just take a razor knife, because the wood compresses it, and you can cut it super easy with a razor knife. So I went and got that two by four, and that's what I used to cut the two foot down to fit my stud base or my uh, joist base here. So, enough about that. And then I'm gonna start on the corners for the mains. We also have some little corners going here to hide that. And one that matches over here. And then the ceiling feature is gonna go in. So I'll have an update on that in a few days. See y'all later.